Father, we want to you a good hand. Father, please have your way in this teaching in the name of Jesus. Lord, I submit myself unto you. Father, please let your power rest upon me and you will speak to your people through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every word that you want them to hear, Father, let it meet with faith in their heart Amen. and let it work for their good in the name of Jesus. Amen. And at the end, Lord, you will take all the glory. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We are in lesson 18. Quickly, I will want us to just follow me as I will, by the grace of God, just rush through these teachings today. Because we have many to, to learn in this teaching. Lesson 18. The, to the topic is... Strength in quietness. Strength in quietness. And our Bible reading is taken from the book of Proverbs. And you will agree with me, the book of Proverbs is full of wisdom. And I will sh Holy Spirit will share some of it with us this morning in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 10, we'll be reading from 19 to 21. Proverbs 10, 19 to 21. And I read... In the multitude of words is sin not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is choice sliver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will agree with me, the few Bible verses we've read is full of power and wisdom. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, if you lack wisdom, God will bestow upon you in abundance this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And our memory verse is taken from the book of uh, Isaiah 30, verse 15. Isaiah 30, verse 15. For thus said the Lord God, the only one of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall, ye, shall be your strength, and ye will not. Praise the Lord. So this is the word of God to us, the children of God. He was talking to the people of Israel. We are the generation of history. And the Bible is telling us that in, rest, in returning and resting shall ye be saved. So God wants us to, one way or the other, to always, he knows we don't want to rest. But he's enjoying us that we will be saved when we have good rest. And when we know how to maybe seal our mouth where we ought to do, then something good will not put ourselves in trouble. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, your mouth will not put you into trouble in the name of Jesus. Most importantly, the young ones among us, I pray the Holy Spirit will enlarge this teaching in your heart because many of us, they are talk with better one chance. Permit me to say that. Because maybe one way or the other, if we use our mouth loosely, that has put us into trouble. And I pray over your life, if peradventure, you sow the seed that will grow to become a tree that will kill you tomorrow, the Lord will uproot it in the mighty name of Jesus. Our introduction to the topic says, words are powerful and can make or mar situations they are not sent, they are not sent. Praise God. So as I've said, maybe some of us will utter what we did not supposed to utter one way or the other. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 6 verse 2, it says, you are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. Praise the Lord. And that is more reason we parents we should watch or be careful of what we say to our children. 
Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that the power of life and death lies in the tongue. And I want to let you know, the devil in the life of every human being is our tongue. And I pray the mighty name of Jesus. The fire of God will purify our tongues in the mighty name of Jesus. What can save or put one in trouble? It takes foresight, maturity, and self-discipline to be a person of few words, spoken in wisdom. Therefore, be in a rush to speak always is a sign of weakness and foolishness. Do you hear that? Being in a rush to speak always is a sign of weakness and foolishness. Praise Jesus. Before I go forward, if young ones among us, if you can quickly write, write this down, and I believe it will help you as you navigate your destiny in this wicked world. Number one, keep, learn to keep secret until the time is due and the atmosphere is right to speak. Set watch over your mouth. Don't say everything happening in your life. Not everybody, not everybody need to have access into your life. Praise Jesus. Some of us, at every little things, even while we are here in the Western world, family back home, we know what is going on. I don't know. Maybe it's because some of us just want to attract sympathy to ourselves. It's act of foolishness when you begin to tell somebody who doesn't have clue to help you in your situation. Praise the Lord. I said this some time ago, that it is not every dog in the street that you feed. There are some dogs they need strength to bite. But when you feed them, you may be the first person to come to. Be wise. What did I say? Be wise. So, and also, the young ones, don't fall to the pressure <laughs> of your friends. When they say, ah, you don't want to tell us now. Tell us now, what's going on? Don't tell anything. So, because some of us, when things are going on in our home, we tell people the bad thing that is going on in our home. Praise the Lord. And maybe when God now begins to intervene in that trouble, and he begins to put this in, sh in shape, the people that you have said bad things to, and that is what they will begin to carry on. Praise the Lord. They will begin to sp spread the bad, 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 bad news. And when Jesus died, Jesus died for three days. On the third day, he resurrected. And people were still saying about, Jesus has died. We are right, he has resurrected. Any word that you sold out, it will be very difficult for you to buy back. I pray the Lord will give you wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. It's people that will get you into trouble. They are the ones that will still call people. Come and see the trouble that he has gotten him, him or herself to. It's not every information you share with people. Genuine people are scarce. What did I say? Genuine people are scarce. Finally, the only thing you can send to your future is your prayer. Your prayer will go to the gate of your destiny to wait for you. When you now see something that will alter the destiny of God over your life, your prayer can reverse it. So, the youth among us, you need to pray more so that your destiny will be achieved in life. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, your enemy will not get to the place of your destiny before you. In the name of Jesus. We have to listen outline. 
I think those tips will help you. Because some of us, we didn't have opportunity to hear all this. Maybe our life would have been better than this. But God is still doing something. He's a miracle worker. Hallelujah. The first lesson outline is the mouth of a fool. The mouth of a fool. And the second one, being slow to speak and its benefit. A fool is a person who acts unwisely or imprudently. However, one of the downfall of a fool is their mouth, which is very quick to express all the thoughts of their heart. According to Proverbs 18, 7, 7, Proverbs 18, verse 7, a fool's mouth is their destruction and a trap to their own soul. This is because fool do not exercise any control in the use of their tongue. Neither do they keep their mouth shut or speak only when necessary. Praise the Lord. It's not everything that you say. When you hear it, it's not onus, it's not on you that you must spread it, whether good or bad. I'm not saying that you should, not, <laughs> you should do evil and you keep it to yourself. Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying that you know it's not every information you give out to people to have access to. Because when you do that, they, will, they have something to hold to work against you when you least expect it. Hallelujah. There are questions people will ask you. You just need yes or no answer. You don't need to narrate story. You must learn how to do that. So a fool cannot be trusted because of lack of integrity in their speech. A fool cannot be trusted because of the lack of integrity in their, in their speech. Proverbs 19.1 says, Better is the poor who walks in, the in his integrity than one who is perverse in his lips. And the Bible makes us to understand, if a fool knows how to seal his mouth, it will be likely to be a wise man. Praise the Lord. Unlike wise man that run his mouth anyhow. Because by doing so, you will see fault in some of the things that he or she will be saying. Praise Jesus. So if a fool reveals their entire mind because they believe they are always right and hate any form of uh, accountability. The talk of a fool destroys them because it puts them into trouble. Ecclesiastes 10:12 The words of a wise man of wise man's mouth are gracious but the lips of a fool shall swallow him up That is the word of God Learn how to speak A fool argues and expresses frustration openly and we often engage in strife <laughs> they know how to do that. And I was sharing yesterday, like somebody by what place, the moment he entered anywhere, you will know that she has come. She has been on a holiday for two weeks now. Everywhere was calm. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's one thing I would I would I would like to learn from her. If we walk from her to Piccadilly, we'll greet everyone that he miss, he, she meets on that way. Good morning, brother. Good morning, my darling. Good morning, my uncle. That's how she does. And I love that in her. I pray the Lord will help you also in the mighty name of Jesus. Because of our time, let's go. To, we will learn more in the second lesson outline. I don't want to exceed my time today. <laughs> Be slow to speak and its benefit. Being slow to speak 
is not a sign of weakness. Apostle James, in the book of James 1.19, James 1.19, admonishes everyone to be slow to speak. This means that we must learn to do the following. So these are the tips that will help you to know how to speak when you ought to do so, and to know how to quiet when you ought to do so. Number one, think before you speak. Think before you speak. You will think whether this word that I will say will bring glory to God or will go that way with the person that will hear it. I was sharing yesterday, most of us, uh, husband and wife, I said, out of these two questions, a wife asks the husband, where are you coming from? What answer do you think such woman will get? <laughs> Many of us who grew, who grew up back home, I believe the next thing, where do you send me? And someone who says, oh, there is no problem that you came late. Which answer do you think such woman will get from the husband? He will get the explanation right. Praise the Lord. Hope that is no problem that you came late. The man will definitely explain why he came late to the house. So, we must think before we speak. Proverbs 29, 20 says, do not you, do you, do you see a man hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. There is more what? Hope for a fool than a man who do what? Who just uh, hasty in his word. Who does it think before he releases the word? Number two, choose and use your word wisely. Choose and use your word wisely. Proverbs 25, 11. The Bible says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of sliver. A word do of fitly spoken. When the word that you speak is right, good thing will build on it. That is the example that I gave. But when you ask questions that somebody who doesn't go well down with somebody, the answer you will get will not be equally good to you. Hallelujah. Number three, let, let our words be gracious. According to Colossians 4, 6. Colossians 4, 6. He said, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. So every word that we say that comes out of our mouth must give God glory, must at least encourage somebody not to just discourage or to dampen somebody's uh, uh, faith or whatsoever. <coughs> Praise the Lord. So whatever that will come out of our mouth must be the word that will lead someone's soul. Hallelujah. Number four, being rushed with our words and decision. So we should avoid it, being rushed with our words and decisions. Let me go forward. Number five, speak words full of wisdom. So we need to speak words full of wisdom. Psalm 35, verse 30. He said, the mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom, and his tongues talk justice. I want you, you need to know how, what to do. There is no wisdom when you tell somebody. Don't, uh, how do they say it? <laughs> you don't tell somebody that. Uh, don't tell anybody. Uh, it's, that is nonsensical. When you just say, uh, don't say it's me that tell you. 
So mm -hmm. what's the essence of people telling they, they say that in the first place? If you don't want another person to hear it, what's the essence? So it's, it's foolishness to say somebody, don't say I tell you, or don't tell anybody. So if we don't want people, I've said it before, anyone you sold out, you, it's very difficult for you to buy back. You reverse it, to back back, never come back again. Hallelujah. So we must learn to do what? To speak full, uh, full of wisdom. Hallelujah. Also, we must talk less. Talk less. Proverbs 15, 28. No, let's, let's, let me read Job 29, 9 to 10. He said, the prince, the prince refrained from talking and they put their hands on their mouth. Verse 10 says, the voice of the noble was hushed and their tongue stuck to the roof of their tongue. Praise the Lord. We are princes. We are noble. So we must do or learn how to keep our mouth shut. It's not every word we say. It's not everything that people should know about us. Like I gave yesterday, a, a, a man of God said something, that a sister had an appointment to come for counseling with, with him. And before the sister came, she has already told one of the friends that she's going to see Pastor so, so, so for counseling. And everything that she's going there for, she explained to the sister. And before she got there, the sister that he gave those information to call the pastor ahead of her. That's also person is coming for counseling. And uh, this is the problem that she is going through. Maybe she may want not to tell you so that you know how to help her. Can you imagine that? And if the pastor is another <laughs> somebody, uh, well, he just said he didn't, be, he didn't he behave as if he, he didn't hear anything from any source. Praise the Lord. And maybe genuinely, the sister may, <laughs> may be genuinely saying that thing. But the word of God said, the bed of the head, they have picked it. And there are spirits that may be even be compelling that sister to be saying all those things. Hallelujah. So we must learn to keep secret. Praise Jesus. Number seven, ask the Lord to set a guide at your mouth. Psalm 144 verse 3. Psalm 144 verse 3. It says, set a guide, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Hallelujah. So a man who has no control over his lips is like a what? A city without war. So if you don't have control over your leaves, your anything can go. And your leaves may lead you to trouble. And I pray for you today. Your mouth will not put you into trouble in the mighty name of Jesus. So please, whenever you see a wicked man before you, learn to keep your mouth shut. Because genuine people ask us. Genuine people ask us. They ask us, so not that they are not existing, though. Don't, don't get me wrong. Hallelujah. So, the other part of it, the benefit of slow to speak. The benefit of slow to speak. Slow to speak has a lot of benefits. For instance, it shows we are knowledgeable. Hallelujah. You know, I said earlier on, even if a fool keeps his mouth shut, everybody will <laughs> take it to him that, ah, that man, maybe he has something upstairs. But with the abundance of uh, words in somebody's mouth, as the Bible has made us to understand, that they will even take a fool more wise than the, the one who called himself a wise man. Hallelujah. <laughs> so number two benefits. Also, it shows great understanding. So when you know how to, slow to speak, it shows great understanding. So, uh, Proverbs 10, 13. Proverbs 10, 13. They say, wisdom is found on the lips of him who has understanding, but a rod is for the back of him who is devoid of 
understanding. So there is a rod, a cane in the back of a fool. Hallelujah. So when we have that grace of God upon our life to slow to speak, definitely it will be, be a sign of understanding. Also, another benefit is if we are able to bridle our tongue, we will command the attention and respect of others. If we are able to do that, we will command the respect of others. Another benefit is our words will be sound and seasoned with wisdom, as we've read earlier on. Our words will be sound and seasoned with wisdom. Another benefit, quickly, we will avoid needless arguments, troubles, battle, and keep safe. Proverbs 21, 23. Whoever guides his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from trouble. And again, don't trust your world with any man who is not emotionally stable. Any man who is not emotionally stable should not have access into your life. I pray the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. In conclusion, because of our time, we can create unneeded tension if we are rushed with our mouths. Relationship grows by listening actively and speaking slowly. Relationship grows by speaking, by listening actively and speaking slowly. Food for thought. I want you to pray, bow your head and pray to God. Father, help me to learn how to say guide over my mouth in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and turn to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we rise to our feet as we bless the name of our God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, on this last day of the year 2023. God is good to us.